Hi everyone, welcome back to General Chemistry. We're on chapter 18, looking at electrochemistry. This section will cover 18.1 and 18.2, uh, which covers galvanic cells, basically batteries, and standard reduction potentials of those cells. So how to calculate the voltage of these um, electrochemical systems. So this is video two of four. The last time we covered uh, how to balance redox reactions, which again will be essential throughout this chapter. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So an electrochemical cell is a system in that converts chemical energy into electrical work or electrical work into chemical energy. So all batteries are electrochemical cells. And the way that we're going to distinguish them is whether they are uh, basically out of equilibrium in a way that provides energy or whether we need to provide an exterior voltage to sort of charge them, drive them back the other direction. So a galvanic cell, uh, also commonly called a voltaic cell, uh, it converts chemical energy into electrical work. So that is our battery cell. So the difference between this and our next definition is that in this case, the Gibbs energy is negative. So there's a uh, thermodynamic drive to, for the reaction to proceed as written. Uh, so this reaction is going to be spontaneous. It's again, what happens in a fully charged battery. Uh, as the battery is discharging, it's losing um, some of that energy. The Gibbs energy is slowly approaching zero when it will eventually reach thermodynamic equilibrium. Once that occurs, we no longer have a battery. We have a, a dead cell. But we can, in some cases, depending on the system, um, we can have now an electrolytic cell where we're converting electrical energy to chemical energy, uh, in this case, again, recharging a battery. So the Gibbs energy is going to be positive. It's non-spontaneous. We have to apply uh, an external energy source. In this case, it'll typically be uh, a voltage that we've applied to our system. So all um, electrolytic cells have an anode and a cathode. The anode is the electrode at which oxidation, uh, the, the oxidation half reaction occurs. So it's where the electrons are ultimately coming from. It's losing electrons. The cathode is where the electrons are going. So it's where the reduction half reaction is occurring. Uh, so you can remember this by the uh, mnemonic uh, tool, uh, an ox and a red cat. That's always what my high school chemistry teacher used to say back in ancient history now. Um, because uh, we have to have then the, the proper uh, an instead of a for oxidation. Uh, hopefully we can get that straight. And who doesn't like a red cat? All right. Another cell component that we require in addition to the anode and cathode is a salt bridge. Uh, because as our reaction proceeds, we're going to have a, a buildup of charge on one side of our cell that's not on the other. Uh, and so this is going to lead to a charge imbalance. And this, um, it'll quickly then short circuit our, our cell if we do not have a salt bridge. So this allows then the circuit to be complete by allowing a flow of ions between the two uh, cells, again, to balance the charge. All right, so let's look at what this actually looks like. Here is a galvanic cell. Uh, we have two uh, pieces of metal. In this case, on the left side, we have uh, pure nickel metal. On the right side, we have pure silver metal. And they're both sitting then in baths of their own ions. And so there's a voltmeter uh, between the two for connecting them with a, um, a conductor wire. Uh, and then finally, we have our salt bridge there in the middle to again transfer ions. So the reaction that's taking place on the left side there uh, is solid nickel is becoming nickel ions, and that's releasing two electrons. So if, um, if we're releasing electrons, that's the oxidation side, so that must be our anode. All right, similarly, we have our, uh, on the right side now, we have our silver in solution. It's gaining electrons um, that are coming from that nickel half reaction. It's gaining electrons and becoming now silver solid. The overall then reaction that's occurring is solid nickel plus silver ions makes nickel ions and solid silver. All right, so even though um, this is the overall reaction, we have nickel uh, ions next to nickel metal and silver metal next to silver ions. So remember the anode then is where the oxidation is occurring. It's, where, it's always where electrons will occur on the product side of our reaction. 
um, electrons occur on the reactant side than during the, on the cathode side. This is a good thing to just uh, get yourself some flashcards and make sure that you can tell the difference um, right away just looking at it. Uh, you don't want to uh, be working problems and be just sitting there trying to figure out which is the anode, which is the cathode. Um, make sure you can quickly uh, do identify those. Uh, we also have to have a, a balancing ion. We can't have, again, a situation where we just have positive charge. So there needs to be some other electrolyte in solution. In this case, it's nitrate. That'll balance the charge from both silver and nickel. It's also uh, conveniently not going to crash out on us, so it's soluble. Uh, so the composition then of the salt bridge uh, is uh, the same ion that's found in solution. So in this case, it's going to be a solution of sodium nitrate that's going to allow then that charge balance to be maintained on both sides. So as electrons again flow then from our anode to our cathode side, uh, we get then a, a transfer of nitrate from one side to the other and sodium from one side to the other. So let's look at what's happening. Uh, that nickel solid there is becoming the nickel ion. So if we're generating more positive charge in solution, we need more negative charge in order to balance that out. So nitrate from our silver nitrate, sorry, sodium nitrate, salt bridge is flowing into our beaker. Uh, similarly, once we have um, electrons being consumed by silver and becoming silver metal, well, we're ultimately losing positive charge in this in this side of our cell so we need to balance that uh, with with a positive charge so we're adding in this case now sodium ions all right um, by convention because we decided uh, which direction would be positive and negative the uh, electrons flow from the, the uh, negative to positive terminal so the anode is the negative side and the cathode is the positive side again by convention all right so lots of different things going on here even though we initially have what looks like a simple setup um, there's really a lot to take in uh, in this one figure all right so for a voltaic cell to distinguish it from a um, an electrolytic cell um, under normal conditions uh, what will happen is electrons will flow from the anode to the cathode uh, and then our background electrolyte will allow that to balance out. So that is an effective battery. Uh, there would be a measurable voltage. The uh, actual voltage, as we'll be able to calculate in a minute, is dependent on the identity of the composition of that, of that cell. So, so metals, uh, half each half reaction has a, um, has a standard reduction potential. And so from those values, we'll be able to calculate the voltage um, going through uh, this cell. So uh, as again, as electrons are passing from the anode, the negative side, to the cathode, the positive side, uh, it's able to uh, do chemical work. Uh, in this case, transfer that to now electrical energy, and we could say light up a light bulb, or right, power our phones, or any such thing. An electrolytic cell, by contrast, uh, requires an external power supply to do anything, to go forward. Uh, so our, uh, in this case, now our anode, this is backwards, our anode uh, is, again, the oxidation end. It's losing electrons. Uh, those electrons are uh, flowing from um, the anode to the cathode. Uh, but now, because we've applied external energy, in, case, in this case in the form of um, a power supply, uh, we're driving that reaction backwards. Uh, so we're inputting energy in order to make that work. So as we can see, uh, we'll be able to relate this um, in the next lecture uh, to thermodynamics. There's always a, uh, an explanation for this. So the Gibbs energy is, of course, again, negative in the voltaic cell and positive in the electrolytic cell. So we're applying an external energy uh, to drive that reaction forward. So the one last thing to note on uh, this slide is, again, uh, the actual position of the anode and cathode has switched, even though we have the exact same metals. So the composition of this cell is identical to the composition of this cell. This is, would be the example of what happens to the charged battery. This would be the example of what's happening in a depleted battery. So we need to drive that backwards. Uh, so we're, uh, the flow of electrons, the direction of the flow of electrons, uh, is ultimately what dictates uh, which is the anode and which is the cathode. Um, if we're in, again, inputting electrons from, say, an electricity source, um, well, those, uh, those are flowing to now uh, the cathode, which is being reduced, 
charging it up until when, once we disconnect that power supply, we'll regain this situation and the anode and cathode will again flip. All right, so let's look at how we actually determine uh, potentials of cells. Well, first we have what's called the standard reduction potential, uh, which is abbreviated E with a not symbol. The standard reduction potential uh, is the potential of a half reaction, so just part of our cell, um, always by convention written as a reduction in which all reactants and products are in their standard states, which is at 25 degrees. Whew, quite the definition, but it actually is pretty straightforward once we get there. Uh, so the standard cell potential, now we're going to combine the two uh, half reactions, is a measure then of how forcefully an electrochemical cell in its standard state can pump electrons through an electrical circuit. So it's the cell potential uh, that we get when we're, when we're buying a battery. The cell potential will typically be listed. And it's again determined by the standard reduction potentials of the individual reactions in that cell. Um, note the standard states appears twice here, and uh, we need some reference point because we can't, um, often can't measure voltages, say, directly. Uh, we need to reference them to some condition, um, and so the standard states are then defined as a one molar solution of uh, the electrolytes, sorry, a one molar solution of the um, ions or partial pressures of gases at one bar. All right, so let's take a look then at a cell and how we're ultimately going to make uh, determine standard reduction potentials. So here in, in figure A, we have um, a cell composed of zinc and zinc metal. And we have then a solution of hydrochloric acid, one molar, uh, platinum electrode, and hydrogen gas. Um, so this, uh, this cell, or this half reaction over here, uh, because it's in its standard state, which we'll see in a minute, one molar hydrochloric acid, one bar of hydrogen gas, has a uh, cell potential that's defined as zero volts. Um, by convention. So uh, we can then use this device, which we call a standard hydrogen electrode, um, we, to measure then the uh, reduction potential of other cells directly. So if our other side of our cell contains one molar zinc um, with zinc metal, that is in its standard state as well. And so the voltage produced as electrons flow from the uh, anode to the cathode uh, are, is indicative of the standard reduction or oxidation potential of that cell. So in the case of, again, zinc, uh, we're measuring a voltage of 7.76 volts, and that's for this reaction right here. Zinc solid goes to Zn2 plus plus two electrons. But that's the oxidation reaction. Uh, we're going up an oxidation number, and ultimately we're, gonna, we're, go, we're going to consider uh, reduction potentials, and so we'll need to be able to interconvert that. Um, analogously, we have another standard hydrogen electrode on this side. Uh, we have now our other half of our cell over here. So if we had then a cell composed of zinc and copper, uh, we could determine what the reduction potential must be. So in this case now, uh, we are measuring a, a voltage of 0 0.34 volts, um, going uh, electrons going from our, uh, in this case, anode to cathode um, in our um, in our standard hydrogen electrode, well, we know that that's then the standard reduction potential because we're at one molar copper uh, with, again, pure copper metal. So that standard reduction potential is 0 0.34 volts. So what we might need to do is ultimately uh, convert then this zinc potential to uh, the way that this is generally reported, which is again the standard reduction potential. So to do that, we just take the sign um, of the uh, voltage of the oxidation potential and invert it. So now it's going to be negative. So negative 0 0.76 volts. All right, so again, the reason why this works is that uh, this reaction here is the standard hydrogen electrode and it is defined to be zero volts. Um, so this hydrogen gas, again, has to be at one atmosphere and this solution has to be one molar hydrochloric acid. Um, all right, so here's a table then of standard reduction potentials for all sorts of reactions. Uh, reduction potentials, uh, it's noted here, for many, many electrodes have been measured and tabulated, so not just what we're finding there. Um, so again, here is uh, our reaction of um, 
protons and electrons making hydrogen gas def uh, defined as zero. So remembering that uh, because then this is, these are standard reduction potentials, this is what's measured for each of these with one molar concentrations of uh, the ions and uh, one bar of the gases if uh, that's applicable. So one bar of chlorine gas and making then uh, chlorine uh, ions. So note, um, these are always by convention written as reduction potentials. So we're always, electrons always appear as a reactant. So if we need then the oxidation potential, we just again make the sign negative and now we're ready to go. All right, so let's look at the standard uh, potential of cells. In order to calculate the uh, standard uh, potential of cells, we need to know uh, the standard reduction potential of both the anode and the cathode. So to get at the overall, um, at the overall value, we need those two individual reduction potentials. So in, in the case of our previous example, we have copper uh, ions going to copper solid. Remember, these are both written as a reduction, and zinc ions going to zinc solid. So note the voltages here, again, 0.342 volts for the system and point, negative uh, 0.762 for the system. So we can tell a couple of things from these values. So the reduction half reaction with a more positive value, more positive larger value, will proceed as written. So that will be our cathode. So in the case of these two species, uh, this copper value is a much, a, a much larger positive value than our zinc reaction. So this will be our cathode uh, naturally. Um, the other reaction then uh, will be will run in reverse. So what will actually happen thermodynamically is the zinc will become then zinc ions. It will be the oxidation uh, end of our of our cell. All right, so in the case of then this example here, uh, we have again zinc and copper and at one molar concentrations, so they're in their standard states. I assume we're at 25 degrees. Um, so electrons are flowing from our anode, which is zinc, all the way then to our cathode made of copper, and that then has a characteristic voltage because again, we're at our standard state. So in general, copper or zinc is being pulled off of that metal as making becoming ions and copper is plating then plating out onto this, um, this piece of metal. Uh, so we can calculate what this value must be uh, from then the standard reduction potential values. We'll subtract this number from this number and end up with our cell value, which matches right here. So we can do that again for any cell. All right. So again, we're just going to subtract, um, going to subtract the um, anode value from the cathode value, and we're on our way. So the trick, only trick here is just not to get the reactions backwards. All right. So often we'll need to depict these um, quickly in shorthand. So there's an, a shorthand notation in order to write these out. We could draw this whole thing out. Uh, but it's easier just to write it um, using the anode and cathode shorthand notation. All right, so by convention, uh, we write electrochemical cells as um, the reaction and the direction that it's actually headed. So on the anode side, on, on the left here, we have zinc solid going to zinc ions. And remember, this is the oxidation uh, component. We're going up in oxidation number. Um, and so we write it then in the direction the reaction is actually proceeding. So zinc metal is becoming zinc ions. Then we have, by convention, the cathode on the right side, uh, going copper to going to copper, so that's being reduced. So it is, in fact, our cathode on, on this side. The individual species are separated by single lines, and the cell is separated uh, by this double line, which represents then the salt bridge. So by convention, then, we we now have a shorthand notation, uh, and we have to be able to then write it in the correct order. All right. Um, so for any uh, for any cell, we can write it like uh, we can write the notation like this. Uh, if we then uh, specify concentrations, um, we can know right away whether or not we're in our standard state. So if you have then a value other than one molar here, we can assume that we're not in our standard state. And so the, uh, the actual measured voltage is going to vary from the standard cell voltage. All right, so let's look at how to make uh, a cell diagram, just as a quick example. So now we have a different cell. We have still copper um, at one molar uh, and copper metal. But now the other side of our reaction involves silver and silver metal. So if the, if the electrons are now flowing this way, 
Uh, copper is now being oxidized, and so this is now our anode. Meanwhile, silver is our cathode because it's receiving electrons and becoming reduced. All right, so here's the reaction that's occurring. That copper metal um, is uh, coming off into solution as the ion as it's losing electrons, um, and it, uh, that silver is becoming uh, solid then as it's gaining electrons. So how are we going to, again, write the shorthand uh, notation for this? Well, let's start with the solids. We have copper and we have silver. And so we're going to actually write them in the way that they appear in this reaction. So copper solid is on the left, uh, so it's going to be our anode. Uh, silver solid is on the right, it's going to be our cathode, and so we're going to maintain that, uh, that order. Alright, so we can go ahead then and finish filling the rest. Copper uh, is, separ is in the same container then as the copper two ions, which are separated by a salt bridge then from the silver ions and silver. So again, this order is important. Copper is going to copper two, and silver pl one plus is going to silver solid. So we got to maintain the correct order. All right, and then specifically, uh, we can, uh, again, denote the concentration, in this case, noting that we're in our standard states by uh, directly writing the concentrations in parentheses. All right, so let's determine then the standard cell potential for um, a voltaic cell. So here we have our two uh, individual cells. We have a lead electrode, uh, pure again, uh, elemental lead, uh, with lead two ions. Uh, they're separated by a salt bridge. On the other side, we then have a manganese electrode with manganese two plus ions. So right here, it's good to note that um, manganese uh, four plus, if we had that, has a different standard reduction potential than manganese two plus uh, being um, reduced to manganese metal. So we need to make sure that we are using the uh, correct ion or we'll get problems wrong. All right, so we need to go to the table then and look up the values for the standard cell potentials for each of those reactions. Remember, we're maintaining them written as reductions. So manganese two plus two electrons makes manganese metal. It has a standard reduction potential of negative 1.18 volts. That is a smaller value than our standard reduction potential for this lead reaction, uh, negative 0.126 volts. So what's gonna happen then is uh, the, this is going to be our cathode, uh, so the reaction will proceed uh, in this direction as written for lead ions going to lead, and this reaction will be reversed now with manganese solids uh, going to manganese ions uh, being oxidized. Right. So we need to then uh, calculate the cell. We need to get things in the right order. Um, so again, the instructions compare the two half reactions. The more positive of the two will be the cathode. Right. So this one is more positive. Right. Um, the other reaction will be the anode. All right, so the standard cell potential, we take this value for our cathode, negative uh, 0.126, and subtract negative 1.18. That's two negative signs, so we'll end up with a positive value, in this case, 1.05 volts. And again, that's the standard reduction potential of this cell at one molar concentrations. So uh, in the next class, we'll look at what happens when we're not at standard states, when we have voltage, when we have concentrations of ions that vary, uh, the voltages are going to change, uh, but we'll be able to calculate that using a similar strategy to what we saw here. All right, thanks for tuning into this lecture. Uh, next lecture, then we'll look at cell potential, um, again, for non-standard conditions. We'll look at then electrical work, uh, how we're actually going to then um, get electrons out to do uh, work for us, and look at the energetics of reactions. So it is, again, still the Gibbs energy that can, uh, dictates which directions battery flows. Um, and then finally, we'll be able to calculate uh, cell potentials based then on underlying concentrations. All right, see you next time.